Hello everyone and welcome to Art and a Story. I'm Carrie and today we're here in front of Yayoi Kasama's pumpkin. And it's an amazing piece of art that the museum has on loan, special loan for a hundred days. Today we're going to actually read two books and the first one is about Yayoi Kasama and it's by Fausto Gilberti and it's titled Yayoi Kasama covered everything in dots and wasn't sorry. My name is Yayoi and I am an artist and I'd like to tell you my story. I was born in Matsumoto in a historic city in Japan with a beautiful castle. I have always loved drawing more than anything else in the world. When I was a little girl, I carried a sketchbook with me wherever I went. I drew everything I saw. I would sit in the meadows between the flowers and the plants and see things around me that other people didn't. I rushed to draw them in my sketchbook before they disappeared. I used to dream of becoming a famous artist. I longed to fly away to other countries where artists were doing exciting new things. So when I grew up, I decided to leave Japan. My mother didn't want me to go, but I was determined to make my dream come true. I got on a plane and flew to America. I lived on my own in an apartment where I painted day and night. I painted hundreds and hundreds of dots into large canvases. The dots often came off the pictures and ended up on my dress, table, and walls. But I wasn't sorry. Each dot was part of a thousand others, and they made me feel like a single dot that was part of our infinite universe. I was making a lot of paintings, but I was poor and alone. I continued to paint a lot of pictures, and soon I was ready to put on my first solo exhibition in New York City. It was a success. I had more and more exhibitions and more and more ideas for new works. I made soft cushioned shapes, which I used to fill rooms, boats and shoes and cover couches, armchairs and hats. I think that would be an interesting hat to have. I covered bags and dresses with dried pasta. I filled rooms with glittering balls and lights. I created mirrored rooms which reflected everything over and over again. I loved creating all of this experimental art, but there came a time when I had to stop because I became unwell. I left New York and went back to Japan to get better. Back at home, I saw the beautiful mountains and the cherry trees in bloom, but a lot of things had changed since I left. The meadows and streams that used to inspire me to draw had been built over and the cities were filled with smog. This made me sad. Then one day it snowed and the snow covered everything and transformed the landscape, turning it into something pure and beautiful, just how I remembered it from when I was a little girl. I found a studio near the hospital I was staying in and started working. Creating art made me feel better. I also began writing, and I would paint during the day and write at night. Although I miss New York, I decided to stay in Japan, and this is where I still live today. And I still work nonstop making paintings, writing books, and designing clothes and other objects. And the other thing I love to make is pumpkins. I've always loved pumpkins with their beautiful shape and sweetness and I want to show all the love I feel for them through my art. I also like to cover them in, you guessed it, dots. You won't believe it, but when I picked a pumpkin when I was a child, it talked to me. And look, there's that one, and it's talking, and it says, you did it. My artworks have become really famous, and you can now see them in many different art galleries and museums around the world. My dream has come true. And those are really similar to the pumpkin that we have behind us. And it's just one of many pumpkins that Ioi has made throughout her career. The second book I want to share with you today is called The Dot by Peter H. 
Reynolds. And I picked this book because I love all the dots that are on this pumpkin. And there's so many things that you can do just with a single dot. So let's take a look. Art class was over, but Vashti sat glued to her chair. Her paper was empty. Vashti's teacher leaned over her blank paper. Ah, a polar bear in a snowstorm, she said. Very funny, said Vashti. I just can't draw. Her teacher smiled. Just make a mark and see where it takes you. Vashti grabs her marker and gave the paper a good, strong jab. There. The teacher picked up the paper and studied it carefully. Hmm. She pushed the paper towards Vashti and quietly said, now sign it. Vashti thought for a moment. Well, maybe I can't draw, but I can sign my name. The next week, when Vashti walked into art class, she was surprised to see what was hanging above her teacher's desk. It was the little dot she had drawn, her dot, all framed in swirly gold. Hmm, I can make a better dot than that. She opened her never before used set of watercolors and set to work. Vashti painted and painted a red dot, a purple dot, a yellow dot, a blue dot. The blue mixed with the yellow, she discovered that she could make a green dot. Vashti kept experimenting. Lots of little dots in many colors. If I can make little dots, I can make big dots too. Vashti splashed her colors with a bigger brush on bigger paper to make bigger dots. Vashti even made a dot by not painting a dot. At the school art show a few weeks later, Vashti's mini dots made quite a splash. Vashti noticed a little boy gazing up at her. You're a really great artist. I wish I could draw, he said. I bet you can, said Vashti. Me? No, not me. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. Vashti smiled. She handed the boy a blank sheet of paper. Show me. The boy's pencil shook as he drew the line. Vashti stared at the boy's squiggle, and then she said, Please sign it. And if we walk over here, we can see where Joy signed her art, right behind me, way on the bottom. So thank you all for joining me for Art and a Story today. And we hope to see you here at the Yams soon.